שלום, מה נשמע? מה שלומך? איזה כיף שאתה פה. We think that, you know, it's so normal today that we speak in Hebrew, sing in Hebrew. Only a hundred years ago, this wasn't the case at all. Even Herzl, the big visionary who had the big dream to build a Jewish state, never dreamed of speaking Hebrew. When he envisioned the future state of Israel, what he saw was kind of like a Switzerland. To speak Hebrew, he said, was out of the question. We can't buy a train ticket in Hebrew, he said because Hebrew really wasn't the language that Jews spoke and it wasn't their everyday language. In this video, we're gonna talk about the incredible history behind the revival of the Hebrew language and how it became this language that we speak, sing, think in here in Israel. When we say the revival of the Hebrew language, a lot of people say, wait a minute, revival? Was the Hebrew language really dead? And we spoke about this in the last episode. Uh, no, the Hebrew language was used as the prayer language, the language in which we study Torah over the years. A lot of religious poems and songs were written, but it wasn't anyone's mother tongue. It wasn't an everyday language that people used. So it wasn't just taking Hebrew and making it from this written Bible language to a spoken language, but it was about taking Hebrew, which was used for Bible studies and religious reasons, making it into an all-encompassing um, language where we have security and army and economics and state and news, everyday life things, this didn't exist in the Hebrew language. At the end of the 19th century, the Hebrew language dictionary had about 25,000 words, which is 10% roughly from other languages. The Bible on its own has about 8,000 different words, which is about 1% of the English dictionary today. And the Jewish dictionary will grow three times in its amount in a very short period of time. Was it a real revival, a revolution, a renaissance? Whatever word we use to describe it, most academics believe that this word development that started in 1880 was a huge revolution. I did see some critics write that the Hebrew language of today is so different than the biblical Hebrew that it's really like a totally separate language. This definitely isn't the case. The Hebrew language today is definitely a continuation of the Bible. And to understand the new Hebrew today, you definitely have to understand the Bible. Even though it's more modern, it's definitely a continuation. So how did this revolution take place? Let's dive right in. In the 19th century, there's a wave of nationality that comes over Europe, and also the Jews begin to wake up to their nationality. It's about 1700 years that Jews all over the world don't have an independent state, and they're living all across the world in different countries, speaking different languages. Herzl was the first one to write in his book the crazy idea to have a national Jewish state for the Jewish nation. He was the one that really made Zionism into an institution, and the Zionist movement held yearly congresses, and at first Hebrew really wasn't emphasized, and the first few congresses were held in German, which was also the language that Herzl spoke and he wrote in German. Only much later, in 1911, did Hebrew take a much bigger role. The focus on Hebrew as the language of the Jewish nation and the Zionist movement was mainly under the influence of the Jews living in Israel, which was where most of the change was happening and Hebrew was becoming an everyday language. One of the most important figures is Eliezer ben Yehuda, who worked relentlessly to shape the Hebrew language. He moved to Israel in 1881 in what's known as the first wave of Jewish immigrants to the land of Israel. And a lot of people try to belittle his work. They say that either the Hebrew language wasn't really dead or that he wasn't that successful and there were others that were more successful than him. But no matter what, he greatly shaped the Hebrew language and everyone agrees that he did a lot and he was the right person at the right place. He was crazy about Hebrew. He made his family speak in Hebrew and his son is known as the first Israeli boy to have Hebrew as their mother tongue. What he did is that he laid out the infrastructure that shaped and built the Hebrew language. 
He had a Hebrew newspaper. He formed a committee that helped build Hebrew and form Hebrew. They came up with different rules. Uh, for example, there was a different pronunciation between Sephardi Jews and Ashkenazi Jews. So they laid out the rules, what the pronunciations should be. They formed new words. He personally came up with 130 new words that weren't used. One is the Israeli word for ice cream, which is glida. He came up with this name. Interestingly, uh, Israeli poet Chaim Nachman Bialik actually uh, had more than 130 words that he was responsible for adding to the Hebrew dictionary. And the third thing that he did was he built the new revised Israeli dictionary. This dictionary was an incredible masterpiece and it was actually completed after his death. From one point of his life, he was focused. Every waking minute he spent was dedicated to form this dictionary. So how did Eliezer ben Yehuda and his committee come up with new words? What were the rules that they used? So firstly, they would look in the Bible and try to find words and see if the words can be used as another meaning. If not, they would take an existing stem. In Semitic languages, we have stems, which are comprised, are the verbs, which are comprised of three or four letters. And then we have their different forms. So they would take an existing stem from the Bible or from the Talmudic Hebrew, and then create new forms and new meanings to these words. If the concept or the stem was completely missing from Hebrew, a lot of times they would take it from other languages. Eliezer ben Yehuda liked taking verbs from the Arabic language. He would take the stem from the Arabic language and create it into the forms of Hebrew. Eliezer ben Yehuda was a little bit before his time. Like we said, he was part of the first wave of immigrants to the land of Israel. And the second wave is when things and the Hebrew language really started to pick up because the second wave of immigrants were very, very ideological about the land and about the language. They were relentless about speaking Hebrew in public. They formed not only elementary schools, which also existed in the first wave, but high schools also that taught in Hebrew. In 1909, the new city of Tel Aviv played a huge role in the Hebrew language. Street signs were in Hebrew. The municipality gave um, services in Hebrew only. I read testimony that people were actually embarrassed to speak Yiddish in the streets of Tel Aviv. These people also fought very hard to have Hebrew be the language taught and spoken in what's known as the Hebrew language wars. In 1913, this famous language war took place. A German Jewish society was going to build a new engineering school known as the Technikum, which later went on to be the Technion. The language spoken at this engineering school was going to be German because German was a language that was taught in the scientific world and it had a lot of terms in um, in engineering world and Hebrew wasn't a language that was so developed. The students and teachers from this Jewish society and the entire Yishuv uprised against this decision and they won the battle and it was decided that Hebrew was going to be the main language taught and if necessary new Hebrew words would be um, formed to enable speaking and teaching engineering in Hebrew. That makes me proud to be a Technion alumni. So by the end of the First World War and the beginning of the British Mandate, 75% of the younger generation of the Yishuv spoke Hebrew and 40% of the entire Yishuv spoke Hebrew. In 1920, the British Mandate made Hebrew together with English and Arabic be the formal languages of the British Mandate, which was a huge step. Since the destruction of the Kingdom of Yehuda in 586 BCE, this was the first time that Hebrew received a formal recognition. So this is the story how Hebrew became a language as we know it today, and it's thanks to a lot of determination and perseverance of a lot of people. Hope you enjoyed this series about the Hebrew language from the origins following Hebrew in the Jewish exile and completed by the revival of the Hebrew language as we know it today. Shalom ve'nitre'e basirton abach.